Oops, that's gotta hurt. It's almost too absurd to consider, but in the near future, it may be a very real possibility all life on Earth is eaten up by man-made machines in what physicists euphematically call the Grey Goo Problem. It was no one less than the Nobel Prize winning physicist Richard Feynman who gave the rise to the problem in a famous 1959 lecture. Feynman predicted that man will someday be able to create nanomachines, devices so tiny that you can't even see them. A nanometer is a billionth of a meter, and a nanomachine would be a thousand times smaller than the thickness of a human hair. Well, Mr. Feynman wasn't drunk when he predicted this. Machines are getting smaller. Just compare the microchips of today with the huge tape recorder-like computers from the 50s. But it can go much smaller still. In principle, Feynman foretold you can make computers and other gadgets out of single atoms. You only have to clip them together in the right way to make a tiny little piece of construction Lego. And he was right. In 1986, the physicist K. Eric Drexler took up Feynman's ideas and coined the term nanotechnology. The technology of creating and working with devices only a few nanometers big, as it is defined. In 1990, the world realized that this was no longer science fiction, as a team of IBM researchers managed to arrange 35 simple Xeon atoms so that they spelled out the logo of IBM. Rumor has it that another research team responded to this crafty display of atom knitting by doing some intellectual nano graffiti. Bill Gates sucks, also jotted down in single Xeon atoms. Ever since then, nanotechnology has underwent a modest revolution. With the coming of the atomic force microscope, which uses a tiny needle to explore the surface of materials, scientists have been able to pick up single atoms and move them elsewhere. Numerous universities and privately funded institutions engage in nanotech. Nano engineers have at their disposal a toolkit of full crafty gadgets, ranging from nano trains that transport atoms across a nano track to a nano pen that squirts out atoms instead of ink. Also, there's a growing collection of nano switches, nano wires, and nano tubes and more recently, the first nano engines. A rotor-shaped molecule that rotate under the influence of the right changes in temperature and light. Well, but we're still alive and kicking, so where's the gray goo? Oh, we'll wait and see. The end of the world may be nearer than you think. Nano philosophers foresee that one day, some estimate around 2020, it will be possible to create a nano assembler, a man-made molecule that is programmed to create certain things out of raw materials. A nano assembler would, for instance, pick up a plain carbon atoms and rearrange them into the molecular structure of a diamond, or it would make water out of the atomic parts of plain air, or a cheese sandwich out of dust, or water into wine, you name it. This notion is not as weird as it sounds. Our DNA and RNA molecules do it all the time. You just pick up the raw materials from our food and turn it into complex molecules. DNA and RNA are nano-assemblers that manufacture whole organisms with arms and legs and fingers. They can type the word nanotechnology. So if a nano factory can be programmed to create a cheese sandwich out of atoms, why wouldn't it be able to create new nano factories? This is, in fact, exactly the way it will be, at least according to nano pioneers like Eric Dexler. Let's face it. It's a hell of a job to build a nano machine by hand. It would be much easier to make a nano machines that are capable of copying themselves, much in the way DNA molecules replicate themselves. Nano scientists claim it is even essential for nano machines to be self-replicating. Since they are so tiny, we would need millions of them to be any of use. It would be a lifetime to make them all by hand. Nano factories are thus, by definition, von Neumannian machines, devices capable of creating new copies of themselves. But there's one nasty downside. What will such a self-replicating nanomachine do if you carelessly tossed it away? You guessed it, it would go on grabbing all atoms within reach, rearranging, and then making copies of itself. And then copies would make more copies of themselves, and these copies would make even more copies of the copies of the copies, and so on. No, you just don't want to know what this means. With only 72 hours after the release of the first molecular nanomachine, every single atom on Earth would be used to create new nanomachines. In other words, all plants, animals, humans, cars, buildings, and even rocks would have been eaten up by a vast, exponentially growing army of invisibly small nano devices. There you have it. Grey goo. Lots of it. Bye-bye, world.